Hey, what's going on guys? Chris here, checking out more Overwatch characters, and in this one I'll be focusing on the tank hero Zarya, giving you a whole bunch of useful tips and tactics for using those abilities as effectively as you can. Zarya is generally best working alongside teammates, using them to help you both gain more power and protect them in the process. Zarya also has the lowest amount of HP when compared with other tanks, which is just 200 health and 200 shields. Though being 50% shield, half of this can be restored back over time on its own. Because of the way in which you use those abilities, and because both timing and aiming of your weapons is so important for doing well, Zarya has been given the difficulty rating of 3 stars. Though with that said, she does have the smallest hitbox of all the tanks, meaning she's slightly harder to land shots on, along with having the abilities to protect herself and teammates temporarily with barriers. She's a pretty good pick for attacking purposes, plus for taking over objectives, but because of the lack of protective qualities for her entire team, she might be best used alongside other tank heroes, as they'll generally be able to protect your team from incoming fire better. Using barriers that stay up for longer, they can help to save allies more so from incoming attacks. But anyway, Zarya was born in a remote Siberian village, surrounded by post-war chaos and conflict, caused by the Omnic Crisis. Gaining strength and motivation over time, Zarya grew into an athlete, champion weightlifter and bodybuilder, focusing on being the strongest woman in the world and becoming an international star to represent her country. Though just before a world tournament, a huge attack from a far to be shut down Omnium put the region back into war with the Omnics once again. Zarya withdrew from the competition and enlisted to be part of the local defence force, putting that strength and power to good use, sacrificing the fame and personal glory to help her people and protect friends, family and her country from the Omnic threat. So first up is that main damage dealing weapon, the Particle Cannon. This is a heavy weapon that has two main firing modes, the Particle Beam and Explosive Charge. The Particle Beam emits a constant short range energy beam that damages enemies that it makes contact with. Although it's classified as a closer range attack, it does have a 16 meter range, so it's not exactly short, making it usable on anyone within this distance. Its power however, is heavily dependent on how much damage is absorbed via Zarya's protected barriers. I'll go over the barriers in more detail a bit later on, but as a basic understanding for now, the more energy you gain from the barriers being damaged, the more powerful the Particle Cannon will become. There's a few ways to see how charged up the gun is, as the particle beam and crosshair will get thicker, the sound of the beam will be louder, a number indicated under the crosshairs displays the current charge level, and lastly, the energy ball sat at the back of the gun will grow larger too. It's pretty important to know how charged up you are, as you'll be able to be much more aggressive with the cannon, diving ahead and taking out opponents much more easily on higher energy levels. The beam is still a very dangerous attack, even with low or no energy at all as you'll be able to inflict around about 80 damage per second on a 0% charge. Though this can be amped right up to 150 damage per second when that charge is maxed out to 100%. Though one thing to point out is that you won't deal any extra damage for aiming at the head, so don't bother doing this as it's going to be harder to stay on target, and you're going to be much better off aiming for the largest part of the enemy, usually the body, to deal consistent damage easier. Each second spent channeling the beam will consume 20 ammo, and you'll have 100 per reload. So this basically means that you can fire away for 5 seconds until you'll have to spend another 1.5 seconds reloading. Because of that range, it's not always going to be the best way to cause damage, but most of the time, the particle beam does a pretty good job at lowering HP over time up close, and is best used against lone targets working to kill one opponent at a time before moving on to the next. You will have to be quite accurate, as the beam's going to have to directly land on an opponent and stay on said opponent to continuously deal the damage. And although it is an energy based attack, it's still not going to bypass enemy shields and barriers. Though on lone targets, it's got the potential to deal devastating amounts of damage quickly, especially when you can get that energy level to reach those higher values. As for the Particle Cannon's secondary fire mode, this lets you launch out an explosive charge. It's capable of affecting several enemies at once, and is best used against clusters of opponents and targets outside of the Particle Beam's range. Even though the explosive charges are capable of dealing splash damage, they generally deal less damage than the beam, and so for this reason, the beam is usually going to be the better option to use against individuals at closer to medium distances. It's better to use the explosive charges against opponents further away, and then switch over to your beam as soon as you enter its effective range. An explosive charge's damage is also going to be affected by your overall energy level too, just like with the particle beam, and with 0% energy, you're only going to be able to dish out about 45 damage per explosive shot, as opposed to 95 at 100%. 
It's not quite as punishing as the beam, though because you can affect several opponents at once, it's generally better used against groups of enemies that are contesting objectives, and pushing payloads as each blast will likely affect more than one player. But on individuals, unless they're quite far away, most of the time the B mode will be a better pick for taking them on. The explosive charges also deal up to 50 self damage too, so there's another reason why you shouldn't go crazy with them in CQC. Unlike the beam that fires in a straight line, the charges arc through the air and have a bit of travel time too. So it might take some practice to master the trajectory of those bombs, and you might have to aim above your targets in the air to land successful hits at longer ranges. Not only will the explosive charges deal damage, but they'll also push nearby enemies back too, which can be very handy to score a few sneaky environmental kills by forcing opponents over ledges and into bottomless pits. Just aim at the floor in front of an enemy standing right next to one of these ledges, fire an explosive charge in their direction, and then let gravity do the rest. The charges share the same ammo pool with the beam, and you'll be able to fire off four of them with full ammo in your gun, as each shot takes up 25 ammo. Though it's worth pointing out that you can still fire an explosive charge even if your ammo drops below 25 in your gun, and it's often a good tactic to fire an explosive charge instead of the beam just before you need to reload the weapon, and take advantage of an extra shot to deal some additional last second damage. Now to gain all of that extra power to amp up the damage caused by the particle cannon, you're gonna have to use barriers. And the main one is used on yourself to temporarily block incoming fire for 2 seconds, and to help increase your damage output. It's your very own personal shield, that can block up to 200 damage before being destroyed, though you're gonna want to take as much flak as you can whilst the barrier is active within that 2 second window, as every 4 points of damage taken by the shield will convert into about 3% energy, so the more damage that your shield takes in, the more deadly your cannon is gonna be. Although the barrier only has 200 HP, damage values can still exceed this from singular attacks, so in other words, even though a Tracer's Pulse Bomb or Diva's Self Destruct are both capable of dealing more than 200 damage, the barrier will absorb the maximum it can and redirect that energy to your weapon. But none of the damage from the ultimate will reach you, as it'll all be countered by that barrier. So whenever you notice an explosive based ultimate just about to go off, activate the barrier to both protect yourself from all of the blast's damage, and gain a load of energy off it too. You'll benefit from using the barrier against most damage dealing ultimates to feed your energy level and gain full charge much more easily. And if you can time a barrier, just as an enemy has activated a dangerous ultimate, such as Farah's Barrage or Soldier 76's Tactical Visor, then you'll be able to boost your weapon's charge and become more powerful even quicker, also while saving yourself from that enemy ultimate too. The particle barriers have a cooldown time of 10 seconds, and because they're the only way of Zarya really being able to protect herself, you'll have to time them right, as spamming them constantly throughout a match at random times or as soon as they regenerate is going to leave you much more vulnerable with no way to protect yourself along with having less power for your weapon. It's usually best activating them as soon as you start to take damage, or whenever you're running into an area with lots of enemies. This way you're more likely to take hits on the barrier, and timing it with some hard hitting attacks will often give you the best results. If a reaper walks up to you and attempts to mow you down with those shotguns, pop up that barrier and absorb tons of damage. Though if you're simply just moving through a room where you think that you might take some damage, wait until you actually are to activate that barrier, as any lost health beforehand can be regained with 200 of your HP re and regenerating shield anyway. So don't worry about taking a couple of hits as that health will come back on its own, and it's usually better to know that you're being attacked to truly benefit from that barrier. Whenever moving with teammates, if you have a barrier ready, it's usually best to jump ahead of them and become the main target for your enemies to shoot at. Whilst they do so, pop up that barrier and take the brunt of the oncoming fire, both feeding your weapon with energy and generally becoming a distraction, allowing your teammates to return fire more safely. Energy gained from the barriers will slowly be lost over the course of time, and so it's best using the barriers whenever taking damage to achieve a high energy level for as long as you can. Other than being able to emit your own personal barrier, you can also project barriers on allies within 30 meters too. These are pretty much identical to the ones that you'll use on yourself, only they can be created for teammates, plus they have a slightly quicker cooldown time too. Because you can use projected barriers more often, it's best to use them as much as you can, whenever you notice an ally being attacked, or whenever you see them advancing through a dangerous area, as a lot of the time, you'll be able to benefit from the damage that they take, charging your weapon up more, plus they'll be able to survive for longer as that barrier absorbs damage that they would have taken. It's best to keep an eye out for allies being ganged up on, running around in the middle of all the action, having a duel with another player, or on someone who's just about to feel the wrath of an imposing team member's ultimate ability, as these are the allies that are going to benefit more so, 
and it might even be worth jumping into the settings and turning on allied health meters, as this will give you a better reading on who's taking damage and who needs a barrier the most. Another way to help out players is by using a barrier on a teammate who is activating an ultimate ability. As providing protection for vulnerable heroes like Reaper, Farah, McCree and Genji will allow them to stay alive and survive their ultimate's duration. Though to do this effectively, it would probably be best communicating with your team to let them know and plan attacks beforehand, as you'll only have a 2 second window to help out and you'll have to be ready to provide that barrier as soon as your teammate needs it. So last of all is Zarya's Graviton Surge, which lets you fling out a gravity bomb into the battlefield that draws in and traps all nearby hostiles close together for 4 seconds. Although it'll only deal about 22 damage to each person caught in the trap, it's probably one of the most powerful team abilities in the whole game, and when combined with other ultimates and strong attacks, allies will be able to swiftly take out anyone caught within the surge much easier and quicker. Along with helping out heroes such as Farah, McCree, D.Va, Tracer, Hanzo, and most of the other heroes with their high damage ultimates, trapped opponents will be much more vulnerable to Reinhardt's hammer swings, Symmetra's photon orbs, Junkrat's grenades, Farah's rockets, and even your own explosive charges too, with all that splash damage. And the Graviton Surge will give your entire team a brief opportunity to kill multiple targets easier. It's definitely best to communicate with your team and plan attacks, combining the surge with other heavy attacks and ultimate abilities as this will let your team take advantage of it whilst it's taking effect. Though the Graviton Surge isn't completely overpowered, as it can be counted outright if Zenyatta uses Transcendence, or if Lucio uses Sound Barrier, which will often save your trap victims from taking any damage. So it might be best waiting for these characters to use their ultimates before activating your own, if you notice that these heroes are on the opposing team. Also D.Va, Reinhardt, Winston and other Zarya players can all block incoming damage with their barriers and defense matrixes. Making Cryo Freeze to stay alive, Genji can deflect incoming damage, and Reaper can Ray Form too. Plus some characters can even escape, such as Tracer, Genji and D.Va with some of their abilities. So keep this in mind, and remember that the Graviton Surge can be countered by quite a lot of heroes if they're quick enough to do so. Other than using it for offensive purposes, you can use the Surge to pull enemies away from contested objectives, such as at the end of a round, to allow your team to win the match. Firing a Graviton Surge at a popular spawn point or in a corner away from an objective will force opponents backwards and keep them off the point for long enough for your team to achieve victory. But as one last tip with the Graviton Surge, if you really want to make sure your targets are going to go down, quite literally, you can even do something that's just downright evil. Fire a Graviton Surge ball at a wall over a bottomless pit. It'll often drag your opponents over the pit and drop them in it as soon as the ultimate ends. It can be a tricky and often situational tactic to perform, but in the right scenario on the right map, it's totally possible to take out multiple enemies this way, and makes barriers and other defensive abilities useless as they all plummet down to their deaths below. So in conclusion, Zarya boasts a potentially high damage output, providing those other abilities are used in conjunction with her main weapon, and used at the right times. You'll need to be aware of your surroundings most of the time, and be ready to pop shields up to protect yourself and team members whenever necessary. She's quite durable and is a great hero for rushing players and taking lots of flak. Though without many ways to escape attacks or manoeuvre around enemies quickly, you'll have to be careful and ready to use those barriers at the most crucial times to both save yourself, your team, and gain a much more powerful weapon to take on the opposition more effectively. So that's all for this one guys, I hope you enjoyed the guide. Be sure to give me a thumbs up if you did, and of course subscribe for loads more. Take it easy, and I'll see you in the next one.